So I'd like to share with you an idea from quantum physics and how it applies to the tantric orgasmic state. So this is one of the reasons a lot of us come to Tantra is because we hear or we know that there is something much greater possible in intimacy, which is a huge integral part of our lives. And of course, once we start studying Tantra, we realize it's, it actually applies to our entire life. It's a philosophy. It's a way of being. So now to teach this, one of the challenges is that we have to teach it in a way of saying, release this, let this go, let that go, to say, all right, you have to release the constructs out of your minds that limit what's possible. We have to get rid of the guards around our hearts and our emotions so that we can fully energetically merge with another. We need to release all expectations so that truly anything can happen and we're not limited by our past experiences. And then one day, once you've released enough, you'll have a cosmic experience. <laughs> this is a very unsatisfying way to learn, right? To have to delete, 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 and then if you're lucky, something might happen. So then we end up asking, no, I want tricks, I want techniques, I want some way, I want an A plus B equals C way of experiencing this. But that isn't how it works. Not when we're, exp not when we're delving into the divine, the unified field, an, an infinite experience. So it, it tends to be quite a challenge and um, difficult to teach. So now enter quantum physics. And this, I believe, is a beautiful metaphor, a beautiful analogy that we actually can bring into our lovemaking and definitely into our lives. It gives us a framework and a better chance of experiencing this. Because once we experience it, it definitely becomes the norm. So in quantum mechanics, there's a classic experiment called the double slit experiment, where electrons, or light, are fired at a wall where there's two openings. As they pass through the openings, they travel as a wave, almost like ripple, the ripple effects of dropping a pebble in the water, and the waves go out and they interfere with each other. The waves, you know, create a, an interference pattern. So at this point, they could fire a single electron at this wall. So they redid the experiment with the two openings. They fired a single electron at the, at the wall. The weird thing was, this is the first weird thing that applies to our, <laughs> that applies to our sex life. <laughs> the, when it first went to the wall, the single electron it sometimes went through one slit or the other, but it often went through both. And the exact same wave pattern appeared on the other side, as if many electrons had gone. So this was the first question. Why is it acting? And there was, a, uh, there was an interference pattern. Even though a single electron went through, it seemed to go through both and created the same wave patterns and the interference patterns. So that's the first weird thing that we can learn from. The second weird thing is, of course, the physicists were saying, well, how is that possible? Let's measure it. So they set up a measuring device by one of the slits so that they could see how often it went through this slit, what was going on, you know, so that they could quantify this. So what happened, as soon as they put the measurement device there and they fired the electron, the electron now only acted as a particle. It, the wave pattern didn't appear. And no matter what they did, no matter how they measured it, it always appeared as a particle. Take away the measurement device, it would go back to being a wave. So, this is one of the number one things we need to look at when we're making love. And obviously in the rest of our lives, but we'll focus on love making here. It's taking away the observer. This was the beginning of understanding the effect of the observer on experiments. So when we are in our lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, and definitely in our lovemaking, the observer is obviously our brain, right? It's not our soul, it's our brain. This is why we have to release all expectations, release the constructs, release the fears, release what we're really doing is removing the observer from the experience. 
as long as we have an observer present, we will have a particle-like sexual experience. We will have this kind of orgasm. And you can probably, we can have techniques to make that happen. We know how to ejaculate. We know how to have a singular orgasm. We know how to have, you know, a clitoral orgasm or whatever. We know how to do that, but it's sort of like in a particle way, right? We know how to make it happen and it's limited. But if we release the observer, release all the tricks, release all the training in our mind, release all that, the bodies act differently. We actually experience a wave pattern. Each person experiences a wave pattern, an infinite wave. And then those two wave patterns intersect and have an experience together. And now you ride this interference pattern or this connected pattern together, which is totally different. One of the number one ways we release the observer is through meditation. Because the brain is always firing. The constructs will always come in. The fears will come in. That's, it all happens. Through meditation, we learn to come into the breath, come into the soul, come into the stillness. So even if the thoughts are coming in, we don't engage with them. We just let them go and come back to our experience. This changes everything. Because instead of me just saying, just release, 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 I can actually say, let the observer go. Trust that the bodies will actually move as wave functions when we are not watching, when we're not planning, when we're not worried, and we're actually just completely relaxed. This is such a great analogy. It is such a great metaphor to actually experience this, these things that as human beings we are designed for. I think this is why we seek it so much. And as much as it's sort of considered taboo to want to study Tantra for the sexual benefits, it's, it's, what, it's our human potential. You know, it's that whole we are fully divine and fully physical. And how they come together is really what it is to be human. So I hope this helps. And definitely, you can imagine how this applies in life and love and careers and child rearing and everything else. But it definitely applies to our intimacy and it helps us achieve that infinite wave potential that's really within all of us all the time. So I hope you have an awesome day. We'll see you later.